Um, the last time we were here, we were looking at the continuing the fundamentals of the apostolic doctrine. And if you remember, prior to now, we had gone through the repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus. And tonight we're going to look at receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. But we are going to tweak it along certain lines, which I really wanted to see. Okay. Now, so tonight then we are looking at the topic. God's kingdom is power, not just glossolalia. All right, so the kingdom of God is power. Now, I need to uh, point out to you that the Holy Ghost is the most um, underutilized asset in the church today. What I mean by that, I am saying in the apostles of old, they understand the power that lies in the Holy Ghost. All right? Um, and they use that power that the Lord gave them. Now, as time goes on, um, we find that other things come in, competing and so forth. And if you don't mind, um, the church today is oddly different from the world. Let me explain what I mean by that. Now, in Egypt, when there was the let us call it for now in quotation, pandemic in Egypt. Let's call it that for now. There was a place called Goshen. And while darkness was in Egypt, light was in Goshen. And with all of the, the, the signs and wonders that was taking place in Egypt, in Goshen, the people were saved. So the people in Goshen didn't have to run up and down the place and hide like the, the Egyptian, because they know one thing they had to do, especially in the, the Passover, they had to make sure as long as the blood was up on their doorpost, then they don't have to run up and down the place like the Egyptian. What am I saying? I'm saying that the church is not supposed to run up and down the place, but we have the God of heaven. We, we have the God that we pray to. We have the God that we sing and shout to and preach and teach. We are not supposed to run up and down the place, you know, Virgin. Bible says some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God, for they are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Now, let's get to our lesson. That's just my preliminary. Okay, let's get to our lesson. Tonight, then, we are looking at the Holy Ghost. Remember, we deal with baptism already. So the Holy Ghost is a birth in the church. It is a birth. First thing to commence. Second thing to commence, the Holy Ghost is not just speaking in tongues. The Holy Ghost, the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues. But let me, let me hasten to say to you now, not everybody who speaks in tongues have the Holy Ghost. But everybody who have the Holy Ghost speak in tongues. Remember, you can um, stop me at any time when I'm going. So um, I may say things that you don't understand, please stop it. Don't let me go away and get away from you, all right? You, you, you stop me. Good, I, I like that. No, I'm sorry, before I go further, I'm gonna ask you to um, help me with reading tonight and participate. I like when you participate, I can't see you know. So I expect when you participate, I'm gonna see you by feet, all right? Good, no, so let me repeat this. Not everybody who speak in tongues have the Holy Ghost, but everybody who have the Holy Ghost speak in tongues. Okay? Now, 
when you speak in tongues, anointing by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you are speaking to God. Well, you are speaking to God. So the Holy Ghost anoint you to give you a language and speak to God. But there are many spirits gone out into the world. And the enemy, Satan, can speak in tongues. He can, he can possess people and you hear them speaking in tongues because remember the tongues, the tongues of angels, you know, and he was an angel, he don't lose that. But what he does, he can speak in tongues, but he don't have the power. All right? So then, when people speak in tongues, let me, let me give an example. There are some people who, if they are going to get mad at you, right? They won't maybe use in decent language. But they go off on a tangent and they may be speaking in tongues and going on. But the truth and in fact, the heart not engaged at all. They are just doing it because, you know, they, that is what they call glossolalia. So glossolalia, they, they just speak in tongues. That is different from when you speak to God. All right. So when a person is speaking to God, right, it, it is a conversation that you are having with your maker. Good. So the Bible says, he that speaketh in unknown tongues speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understand what he's saying, lo in the spirit he speak in mystery. So the only way you can understand if God anoints an interpreter, and the interpreter will tell you what the person is saying. But that conversation between man and God, we also have variations. Now, let us say, um, let us say you have um, a situation in church where teaching is going on there, or preaching is going on, or something is going on, and just one lone ranger, one person, get up and decide to disturb the service. All right? Um, now, the first thing you know, is that God is not the author of confusion, good? So if one person get up, no, there is a time now, get me? There is a time now when this, the, the, the spirit of God is moving through the church and whoa, we are moving in the spirit, quite okay, quite okay, no problem with that. And even if we didn't have a service, just like when the, the temple was being dedicated, and the spirit of God was so rich inside that temple in Solomon dedicated the temple and the minister could there, no preaching could go on, no ministering could go on. Yeah, that's what we really want to see. But when we have just one person who just feel good, you know, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So that person should hold his or her peace. Or if you're speaking and you want to speak, don't disturb the service. All right, so we have to say all of that, you know. <laughs> we have to say all that because sometimes people say you're quenching the spirit. No, you're not quenching the spirit. If you are, if you feel you want, no problem. But if there is an established order, then God is with order. All right, so we work with that. Okay, so I said to you now earlier on that the Holy Ghost in the church, it, today in this last matter the church, is the most underutilized assets because we sometimes don't realize what we have. That's the thing, you know. The Holy Ghost is God in us, you know, Christ in us, the hope of glory, right? Now, let me give you, let me draw an example. Let's use something like a calculator. Calculator. And uh, yes, I'll, I'll take that question. Um, and a computer. The computer can do what the calculator is able to do, but the calculator can't do what the computer can do. Understand? So it's just like you have somebody who has the Holy Ghost can speak in tongues, right? But, and, but the person who can only speak in tongues don't necessarily have the power. 
All right, that goes along the rules. All right, we have a question, and the question said, uh, speaking in terms and truth. Now, out of the, 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 the question is asking to the difference between, um, could you put up that chat in the chat again for me, please? Yeah, so they're asking the, the asking you to differentiate between the gift of tongues mm -hmm. and actually speaking in tongues. Okay, all right. Gift of tongues. Now, within the Holy Ghost, we have different gifts, which we call gifts of the Spirit. Now, there are some people who are given the gift of healing, laying on of hands, and all that, but also the gift of tongues. Tongues, very tongue of languages. Now, some people will be able to speak different languages and different sentences and different because they are given the gift. Some people will not be able to do that. Right? So what you find, what I'm saying is that the gift of tongues is a person that can speak all different types of languages because it's a gift from God. You get that directly from God. But some people will only be able to speak one. All right? So, but the, the whole idea is speaking in tongues. Now, a person that has a gift of tongues, um, sometimes is underutilized again, because of that person sometimes can go into any country, right? And, and is speaking, and the people understand what he or she is saying because they have a gift to do that. That is something that comes from God, right? That's different from the speaking in unknown terms, all right? If that don't satisfy you, right, put back up a chat and let me see. Okay, so let's move on. Now, as I said to you, when we receive the Holy Ghost, we receive, um, it's a birth, all right? So it's a spiritual birth. It is the only addition to the body of man since you were born, all right? Everything else, you were born with it. So if, even if you go beard, it doesn't matter of time for the beard to develop. That was in you, in your system. But the only addition to your body is the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, this now is um, what sometimes we, not even realize what is happening. Now, when a person receives the Holy Spirit, right? God is saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Which is saying that when you receive the Holy Ghost, now you have the kingdom of God in you. Good? So another, where you find the kingdom of God, it is wrapped up in the Holy Ghost. Good? So that's why we don't deal with glossolalia. If you just speak it in tongues and, and just um, without power, you know, just saying something. Some people put all gypsy and all different types of things, right? We're not talking that. We are talking about somebody that is anointed by God. Now, let me get to something else. All this I'm saying is preliminary. I want to clear up a point. Now, the Holy Ghost tongue, the difference between the Holy Ghost tongue and glossolalia is that the Holy Ghost tongue is water, is out of your belly flow rivers of living water coming up. Glossolalia is just on your head. You work out something in your head and speak. So what you find out is that the person who just speaking because they are empowered by some other spirits or whatever, they can't change gear. You know? They can only drive in one speed going on, one speed they can't change. Gear. But when you are anointed by God, then you find out know, the, the river springing up and then you find the people magnify God. All right, so we we um we find out that people who speak in tongues and speak into God, they don't just speak a language, but they speak in tongues and they 
magnify God. Good. So they speak in tongues and they magnify God. So the, the, the speaking in tongues in this case now, when you are speaking to God, is the initial evidence that the person received the Holy Ghost. What we find now, however, is that sometimes people receive the Holy Ghost and just stop at speaking in tongues. No, it is not that, right? That is just the initial evidence of, of, um, of the person speaking in tongues. Would receive the Holy Ghost is the initial evidence of the person receiving the Holy Ghost. But we must move on. Remember when we were dealing with the earlier days, we used to talk about um, leaving the principles and move on to perfection. Good. So this is a principle because when you get the Holy Ghost, it's time now for us to do work. Not just to sit down and speak in tongues every day. Now, let us go, for example, to the book of Acts, chapter 1. Book of Acts, chapter 1, reading from verse 6 to verse 8. Acts, chapter 1, reading from verse 6 to verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, it says, sir? Yes. yes, sir, please. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and he shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, let's get back to the scripture. Now, some people understand the kingdom of God to be a physical kingdom like United Kingdom or so. And so they are asking the Lord if they'll restore the kingdom to Israel. And the Lord is thinking now about a spiritual kingdom while they are thinking. So he said, not time for you to know the time or the season with the Father has put his own power. But you shall receive, now this is what I want to emphasize now, but you shall receive power. Now, so when you receive the Holy Ghost, um, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, what you are going, you are going to be empowered. Huh? And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea. And remember that place, Samaria, that he told him that they should not go in the way of the Samaritan. Really hope their pot was boiling. All right. But now that they have power, they can go to Samaria and also to the uttermost part of the earth. Good? So the point I'm getting at now, when you receive the Holy Ghost, yes, the initial evidence of speaking in tongues, fine, that's good. But that is not where we start. That is the matriculation requirements, all right, to enter into the church, all right? You must get the Spirit of God. Uh, any man without the Spirit of God is none of it. But... You don't, let, let, let me use an, an example of a, of a university, okay? The university has a minimum requirement that you must attain before you enter into the institution. Now, when you enter that institution with that minimum qualification, you don't stop there. You have to now go on to study university work until you move on to graduation. All right, so here is it now, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then now you shall be witnesses. Huh? You shall be witnesses unto me in to, unto the uttermost part of the earth. Right? Anywhere the, the, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the end of the world and then shall the end come. Okay, good. There, there's a question is saying, 
if when the persons receive the Holy Ghost, I was seeing it. If, uh, yeah, if a person who received the Holy Ghost can backslide. Yes, yes, yes. A person who received the Holy Ghost can backslide. Okay, let me let me let me use an example to you. Um, you can be saved. Now there's a man called John Calvin, and John Calvin said, so "Once you're saved, you are ever saved." But there is the children of Israel that were saved out of Egypt, which is a type of the world, um, died in the wilderness. Good. Now, they, they, at the end time that we are living in now, we are now in the end time, right? Not in the end days, but the time. That, and when I'm dealing with prophecy, then we will see next, as from next month, we will have some prophetic thing, and we'll see where we are. Good. Now, but um, there, in the last days that we are in now, there will be a falling away. Good. So people who were, you're surprised, you know, people who are at the forefront of things may eventually fall away. All right. So of course, if if people don't um if people don't live righteous, godly, and sober, of course, you can backslide. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, just put up the questions for me as I am going on. All right, good. Now, so now we we talk about the kingdom that the people want to find if the Lord going to establish the kingdom again. Now, we also want to look, for example, at Acts chapter 10, verse 44 to 48. Acts chapter 10. Verse, we touch on this, but I just want to bring scriptural proof for it. Acts chapter 10, verse 44 to 48. All right. I also want to add this while you're looking for that scripture that there is a difference between the word quickening and the word anointing. Good. But some people um, confuse quickening with anointing. Now, quickening, you don't have to have the Holy Ghost, but anointing, you have to have the Holy Ghost, good? So, for example, quickening is saying he make us alive. Quickening will make us alive. So, for example, if you think about in Ezekiel 37, the prophet was prophesying to the dry bones, Right? By prophesying the dry bone, they become alive. But that doesn't mean they are empowered with the Holy Ghost. But when you receive the Holy Ghost now, the Holy Ghost now will anoint you to do something. So the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for it will anoint me to do something. All right? So the Holy Ghost will empower you while quickening make you alive. Good? Acts chapter 10, 44, 48. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Um, just a minute, Delicimans. And one, they one, of the one minute, Delicimans, one minute. Yes. Um, this we are talking about the Cornelius situation, the Gentile, all right, that um, people did not know that God would, would give the Holy Ghost. Um, remember, Cornelius was a man who prayed to God regularly and he give arms also so the lord told him that his arms and his prayers come up before him as a memorial and then he sent to peter all right lord and he sent for peter and peter will tell him what he should do so peter went now and peter come to the house of cornelius and was start to talk you know. so while peter was preaching to him now the Holy Ghost. So let me put it this way to you again. Um, first and foremost, we should understand we are not talking about glass alone, we are talking about the Holy Ghost. Now, only God can give somebody the Holy Ghost. People can tarry with you until God be formed in you. But the human being cannot give you are anybody the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist said, I can baptize you with water, but one is coming after me who is mightier than I, 
right? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Good. So only man, only man can only tire with you and wait with you. And you know, but the, the individual has to get him or herself right. The individual has to develop his own feet. The individual has to pre please God. Because if you don't get yourself together, if you're seeking the Holy Ghost, for example, and you're not getting yourself right, no matter what in the Bible, you can't do it. You can't work. All right? Because it's God who did that. All right? So while Peter yet speak now, the Holy Ghost fell. And then that heard the word. And the Bible said, heard the word. Because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. Read. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Thank you. Now, remember now, the Holy Ghost, when they receive the Holy Ghost, they not only just speak in tongues, right? But they speak in tongues and magnify God. That's different from somebody who just talking from upstairs up here. All right? They speak in tongues and magnify God. So here is it now. We are separating the Holy Ghost from just basic speaking in tongues which we call glossolalia, right? And we are saying to you that the, the person that is filled with the Holy Ghost is a power-packed person. Whether we use the power or not, it's up to us. But we are not just like the ordinary person up here. We are highly favored of God. Now, when we receive the Holy Ghost now, we enter now into what we call the kingdom of God, all right? So if we look at, for example, Romans 14, if we look at Romans 14, verse 16 and 17. And while persons are looking for that, Bishop, there's a question in the chat. I believe you just reiterate, reiterated it, yeah. but just to repeat it nonetheless. So the person is asking, how do you know when somebody received the Holy Ghost is there a specific sign otherwise from speaking in tongues? And you mentioned, Paul, that there should be signs that follow, and especially power. Um, I don't know if you want to expand further yes, on yes, that. Yes, I'll just expand on that. Well, initially, we come into that also. But initially, what we do, we, you have to be able to speak in tongues and magnify God. That's the initial evidence. Now, we're going to come to the signs later on. Okay, but, but initial evidence, all right? You have to be able to speak to your God and, um, and magnify, that's initial. So it's like you're coming in as a, as a new person. When a, a baby is born, right? The first thing you want to know is to hear the baby cry, all right? So I, I don't know about this, but I heard, I don't know if it's true or false, sorry. <coughs> I don't know if it's true or false, but I understand when a baby is born, the first thing they do is spank the baby to get the baby cry. And when you hear the baby crying, they say, okay, baby born. So um, in this case, when the baby is born, remember we say you have to born of the water and of the spirit. So it's a birth. So when you're born, then we want to hear you speak. Huh? So don't let anybody tell you, you can have the Holy Ghost and you don't speak in tongues. Nothing like that. You must speak in tongues and magnify God, all right? Good. All right, thank you, Bishop. And just another one, just taking it a little back. Yeah. Um, this is in relation to a prior question that was answered. So the person returned with another question to ask. Um, so then is the Holy Ghost, if the Holy Ghost is removed from the backslider once they have turned aside from the Lord? No, no, no. 
No. Once, once, what, what, oh God, operate. God, when God give you a gift, God don't give you something, and when you turn against him, you take it back from him. No. What happened when a person receives the Holy Ghost and the person backslides? Uh, let me put this here. Um, let me put it another way, make it easier. When you, a man, have a child, let us say you have a boy, and that boy become unruly. He don't cease to become your son, you know. He is still your son, right? So if we are sons of God, and it doesn't matter what happened, it doesn't mean that we are, we can reverse the process of not being a son again. We are still son, but we are like the prodigal. <laughs> you get the point? So the day that we acknowledge that we need to go back to our father, all we need to do is to repent. In other words, do our first work over. The first work is repent, right? So we need to repent and hope that our father will have mercy on us when we come back. But if we stay out there and didn't repent, and the rapture come, then we stay down here. All right? That's the idea. So God don't take back anybody. We call on everybody everywhere to repent. So if a man leave his father's house and he gone out as a prodigal, he is, he's out there not behaving himself right, but he's still a son. The day that he recognized that he should uh, come back, then no problem. All right? And when he's out there now, what you find happening is that the Holy Ghost is not active. The Holy Ghost is passive. And the Holy Ghost is not going to take part in whatever what he's doing out there, right? So the Holy Ghost is passive. The Holy Ghost is not active. So you will find him out there, preach and teach and all that. No, no, no. The Holy Ghost is not empty. I'm not empty to do that. But the Holy Ghost from time to time will say to him, look here, man. Go back home. And I tell you something, a lot of backsliders sometime out here, you know, and they don't feel comfortable like the, the person who has never been saved. There's sometimes there's a difference between them because they have a little more conscience. Eh? Yeah. All right. Okay, let's go to Romans now. Romans 14, verse 16 and 17. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Good. Now, here we come now. The kingdom of God. Good. And the kingdom of God is wrapped up in the Holy Ghost. It is just like what we said, the fullness of the Godhead is in Christ. Good. Now, um, the kingdom of God is not physical. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost is the most important person in the world today. The Holy Ghost is keeping back the wrath of God that is to come upon the land. The day that the Holy Ghost leave the earth, it will be serious, serious problem. And that is why it is important for us to be in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. When the Lord himself, because at that time, the Lord is not going to send an angel, right? Not going to send um, uh, cherubims or seraphim. The Lord Himself, because the church is a bride of Christ, good. And if the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, that Spirit also shall quicken our mortal body. So we have a powerful force, the most important uh, person in the world today is the Holy Ghost, right? And when we have the Holy Ghost, we are not just um, a normal person. The Holy Ghost transforms us 
into a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, call out of the world, out of darkness, to show forth the praises of him that brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light. So the point I'm getting at to you, brethren, when you are in the kingdom of God, you, have, you are a powerful force, exponentially powerful, more than what we believe. Huh? Our faith that we have in our God. Sometimes we read about, sometimes we read about the brethren of old. And when we read about the, let's say, Shadrach, Michigan, and Abednego. Let's, let's say, talk about them. And those people didn't have the Holy Ghost in dwelling in them like us, you know. Joel, who prophesied about the Holy Ghost in Joel 228, he prophesied about the Holy Ghost. Joel did not experience what we experience today. Uh, what you find happen, the Holy Ghost will come upon them for a period of time and then lift and move. All right, they move by the Spirit of God, but to dwell permanently in them, no, we have that today. We are a powerful people, a powerful set of people. And as we had it, somebody pointed out earlier on, we are going down to that. So the kingdom of God, no, is not meat or drink, right? But righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, let me show you something that sometimes we take for granted. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, 1 to 6. And sometimes we take these things as granted because, put it this way, when a child is born into a privileged family and they can go into a Learjet, uh, get a Learjet for birthday present. <laughs> um, after a while, driving into a motor car, I don't mean anything to them, you know, but to a person who never own a motor car, when they get a motor car, oh, what are the prices, eh? Not the point I'm getting at here. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 14, 1 to 6, read. And um, while persons are looking for that, Bishop, before you move further from this point, yes. and I can see that this person is really um, thinking, all right, yes. so based on the question that you answered earlier, yes. um, whether or not the Holy Ghost was taken from the backslider, they came with another probing question yes. to ask um, whether you can explain um, what, well, it can explain rather what the Bible means when it says God doesn't dwell in unclean vessels. Okay. If you can expand further on that. You hinted okay. at it earlier, but if you can just expand on it a little Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, let me put this way to you. God is not active in a backslider. So God would not anoint a backslider to go out and do something and to in other words, God wouldn't, the Bible says, sinner shall not stay in the congregation of the righteous. So the, the, the unsaved, not the unsaved, now you have to, you have to um, differentiate them. The backslider was a son of God, whether male or female, we call him son. All right? So the person is a son. The person received the Holy Ghost. The person backslide. God is not going to be active in that person. The Holy Ghost will be passive in that person. But when that person decides to come back and repent, he's not going to get a new Holy Ghost. Right? What is going to happen is that the person, once a person comes, uh, repent and God forgive the person because there's two ways. When you are a sinner and you come to the Lord and baptize in water, then you, you get remission of sin. When you get remission of sin, you, you're talking about the sins that took place from Adam come right up to what you don't know about. So you get remission of sin. The blood of the Lord apply. You get remission of sin. Now, when you sin after you get remission of sin, what you get from the Lord is forgiveness of sin. So in this case, the person that comes back to the Lord now will get forgiveness of sin, right? And then 
God will put you back into the. But you're not going, you're not going to come again and baptize the new Holy Ghost again. No. One time you receive the Holy Ghost. <laughs> good, good question like those. Keep them coming, please. <laughs> please keep them coming. Right. I, I'm enjoying it. Um, for, um, First Corinthians chapter 14. Could somebody read for me? Follow half the charity yes. and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Right. Follow after charity, which is love, right? And uh, you must desire spiritual gift. We are saying, no, don't just receive the Holy Ghost and feel comfortable because you are speaking in tongues. No, that's not what you are there for. We should have what we call, we should desire to have spiritual gifts. Good? So it's a total different ball game now with a person who has spiritual gifts and a person who can only speak in tongues. We have a little exercise to carry out at the end of this. Let me, so I want to rush it to go down to, yes. Um, but rather now that you prophesy. So when you, right, go down for it and then I read again. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. Yes. For no man understandeth him, Obeyed in the spirit he speak it, mystery. Good in the spirit he speak mystery because you see, um, Pentecost, Pentecost is a correction of what took place at Babel. At Babel, before Babel, the earth was one language, good and confusion of tongue at Babel. But in the, on the day of Pentecost now, we find that um, everybody was speaking, amen, to God. Because the Bible said no, because remember, man of a time that he was, he, he was, this communication to God was cut off. But now that the Holy Ghost um, um, come into us, all right, we now have access to the throne of God so we can speak to God directly good but no man can understand unless god anoint somebody as an interpreter because in the spirit we are speaking mystery now mystery is not something that you learn a mystery is something that reveal all right so when a thing is a mystery it has to be revealed to you can't learn good yes read but he that prophesied Speaketh unto man to edification and exaltation and comfort. Exactly, because you see, um, what is what is happening here now? The, 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 the convert or the Christian person received the Holy Ghost, become a linguist. So you can prophesy to men uh, for to edify them, exaltation and the comfort. I remember comfort. And a lot of people don't learn that yet, that the rod and the staff is not for meeting. The rod and the staff is to comfort. Good? So, and to comfort, because, uh, and let me, let me just exhort a little bit. Um, sometimes some people just want to go up and take up the Bible and feel they should flash their way from Dan to be a Sheba. Right? So, and, and sometimes that's even the pastor, that's the pastor work, the pastor, you know, that's one of the pastor. But some people they just want to go in a church and carry the church, you know, and start to and that's not their job. Their job is to edify exhortation and comfort. So tonight, no, I'm not here to sing the stone at anybody. I'm here to exhort you. I'm here to comfort you. I'm here to open your understanding. Let your let your understand something I'm teaching now. Good. So I hope that you are learning. Good. Yes. So um he that prophesies speak it unto men, and that's what he should read. He went to verses. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, mm -hmm. but he that prophesied edifieth the church. The church, right. I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesy. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, right. except he interpret that the church may receive edifying verse six. 
Yes. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? Exactly. So I'm saying to you that when we receive the Holy Ghost, it's not just stop right here at speaking in tongues. No. We, it's just a matriculation requirement that we reach into the kingdom now. So now that we reach, you know, we must start, move on now to perfection, right? We, because we know, we know, um, we know have the principles, right? So we must now move on now to perfection, good? Otherwise, we'll just be there speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, and sometimes we're not even speaking to God. We just like speaking to them because we can speak it to them. People can speak it to them, I will it. Good. But when we are speaking in tongues, we are really supposed to speak in to God. All right? Good. Now, we go to Mark 16. St. Mark 16, verse 15 to 18. And we deal with what was said earlier on. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, that is being searched for, sir. I have some other questions, and the chat is on fire tonight. Yes. Which is inspiring. Very good. Very <laughs> All right. Good. So while you just made that point, I'll just relay the first question. So the first question is, how is it a person who spoke in tongues once and they haven't spoken again after they were filled? What is the cause of that? Okay. So the person initially spoke in tongues, and then after a while, the tongues, quote, unquote, left them. Yeah. Whether there is tongue, they shall cease. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, now, understand this. Sometimes, and this is a fault at altar, sometimes it happens at the altar. Sometimes people tarry with people and they, they are over them and they are there speaking in tongues because of exuberance. And sometimes the person copy the tongue. Because some people feel that Holy Ghost is just speaking in tongues. No. Holy, because some people, one day you're speaking, they say, oh, you feel, 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 and that's it. No, 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 no. You can copy people at the halter in the eat of a service. People can copy the tongue. Right? So, the person who is an experienced altar worker is empowered with what the Bible says is a laying on of hands, no rub belly business, and all different types of something that don't make people see this God give you the Holy Ghost. Maybe because my name is John, that's why I talk that way. <laughs> and John said, all you can get is baptized in water. But, but no, on serious note. Is God is God is a person that is going to fill the person Holy Ghost. So what we do is mix our faith with the person faith. Good? And the person who have done them backbone work a long time, like oh, Khan just did his backbone. If you notice in Khan just time, Peter didn't have to tarry with him. Right? Peter just speak the word and while Peter yet speak, the Holy Ghost fell. Good? So the point is sometimes for that is the person cut their tongue at the altar, and after that, they can't speak again. All right? So that is one of the problems. Any more questions? All right, thank you, Bishop. All right, so this one I'll ask as a two-part question. So part yes. A, can yes. a person who, can a person who's a backslider still operate in the Holy Ghost and cast out demons? And then, right. part, okay, part A first. Okay, now, I would suggest to a person who is filled with the Holy Ghost but not living anything to leave the man alone. Now, there are some people in the book of Acts called the sons of Sceva, and they went out to cast out demon. And the demon said to them, said, Paul, we know, and Jesus, we know, but who are you? And the demon tear them to pieces. No, we, we, can, we cannot cast out demon all by ourselves, but I can do all things through right. Christ. So when we go, you remember, we, have, we cannot leave Christ behind us and then go, the demon will tear us to pieces. It's a serious thing, all right? Now sometimes some people, uh, let me give you an example. You know, 
when Samson was told not to cut off his ear, you know, as long as he had on the ear, oh Lord, Samson burst and he said, but the day that he cut off the ear, now we have problem. All right? So ensure that we are, because another thing with demons, the Bible say you have to have prayer and fasting. Because the Lord said, these kind only go out by prayer and fasting. And some people eat every day of the week. Some people now rest the food, not, <laughs> and then they got to catch up with demon. Demon will tear to pieces. All right? Good. Next one. All right. Thank you. So part B now, on the same point of the backslider and exhibiting um, such practices of the Holy Ghost. All right. So what if that person died and didn't return? Is he gone to hell with the Holy Ghost? So the person died in their backslidden state. No. Um, but they no. were filled prior to backsliding. Are yes. they gone to hell, quote unquote, with the Holy Ghost? No, 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 no. Um, the first thing we have to understand that um, there is a spirit of man and the spirit of animal. All right. The spirit of animal goes down into the earth. The spirit of man goes back to God. All right. So um, the, the Holy Ghost is not going into hell with nobody. Yeah? So if the man lasts him, he won't think that the Holy Ghost is going with it. That don't matter all, right? You are forfeit your, or let us say anybody, forfeit their way of going into um, the kingdom of God, and they forfeit their way, right? But Holy Ghost not going on the way, right? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And that's why it's important when you get the prodding, um, if you can return, then that yeah. sets up. Yeah. All right, so today, the next today, today, if your ear is voice, pardon not your heart. heart. All right, so we have two more questions in the chat um so yeah. far. So yeah. the next one is there are persons who backslide but are still coming to church. The message reached their heart. So I'm reading it verbatim. The message yeah. reached their heart and they speak in tongues. Would you say that person lacks the power then? Explain. Yes. Um the, all right, let me put this way to you. The question is, the person received the Holy Ghost, the person backslide, and the person is coming back to church. That's what they're saying. Right. So they're saying that the person is active, actively in church. So it's not like somebody who traditionally, as we call a backslide, or somebody who is gone and they're doing all manner of things out in the world. It's somebody who is actively in church, but they're in a backslidden state. Um, it says that the message reaches their heart. So they still speak in tongues. Um, but would you say that that person lacks the power? So is it just a matter okay. of them speaking in tongues with no power, okay. or okay. is there power behind the speaking in tongues? Okay. Right. Let me tell you now. As I said earlier on, um, when the person is a backslider and the person, uh, we are governed by something that God put in us called a conscience. Mm -hmm. Good? That's the first thing, a conscience we are governed. Now, the first thing that condemns a person is their conscience. Now, when a person um, don't obey the dictates of the conscience, then what can happen to that person? As a person preaching and so when a person hear it, but the person still stiff naked, right? What can happen to that person after a while? is that the conscience become dead. And the Bible says, as it has been run over by a hot iron. So the person become less receptive now. And it doesn't really matter. And they just carry on the routine. But they're not coming over fully. So they are between Egypt and Israel. That person is still considered to be a backslider. It's either you're hot or you're cold. You come in the lukewarm state, and that is the logician church type, the lukewarm. That's what we call lukewarm. And you can't be in the lukewarm state, right? You have to be either hot or cold. All right, next one. All right, thank you. And so the last one in the chat thus far, um, how do you know when it's the right tongues speak in so that's verbatim all right so they're asking and you hinted at it, at it earlier um when you um express the difference between glossolalia which is yes. um yes. just speaking in tongues and quote unquote 
changing gear. Yes. All right. So they're asking, how do you know that the person is speaking in the right, quote unquote, right tongues? Okay. That's why I said to you, when you read, read in the book of Acts chapter 10, I said it's not just the speaking alone, but they speak, we heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Now, there is a power that comes with the Holy Ghost. So when the person receives the Holy Ghost, all right, you have no control over yourself. God, God, have you done manufacturing place and manufacturing you? Good. When the person is speaking just like glossolalia, right, you're just talking out your head. So there is a difference between, and this go by experience, and that is why we have to have experienced people, because sometimes people creep into church and come with a little tongue from all different places you know they're coming from, and, and people pass them. No, it is, it is, all right. Um, there one time, you know, let me give you an example. There's what we call Sibolet and Shibolet, right? <laughs> the prophet tell people to say shibboleth and they could say shibboleth they say shibboleth right and that you, you know so the, the holy ghost in a church that is anointed by god will pick up the false stuff right up as you start the holy ghost picked up and they see whole church set off and, and, and put that one because sinners cannot stay in the congregation of the righteous right all right, thank you, sir. So that's the last question in the chat thus far. Okay. okay. Sir, just, just a point here, sir. Brother Brown here. Okay. As you're on that point, sir, when somebody is filled with the Holy Ghost, the scriptures are the spirit bears witness. Mm -hmm. So the spirit should bear witness with our spirit. Okay. So that's how you know that somebody is really filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. yes, yes, brother Brown. Where come? Which church are you from? Going to draw it, sir. <laughs> All right. Yes, I'm saying, that's why I said to you that when the fall spirit come into the church, the, the church is going to pick it up. And the church now is going to raise a standard over that fall spirit. And it cannot stay there. I am telling you, when the Holy Ghost starts, for example, another thing. <laughs> Another thing I want to put in, it's not really relevant, but I'm putting it in. Um, when we receive the Holy Ghost, we have to be very careful now when God... Um, uh, let, let, me, let me take the scripture first and then I bring it back to you. Okay, St. Mark um, 16, 15 to 18. Let me take the scripture first and then I bring it back. And he said unto them, yes. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. No, go he into all the world. It. Go into all the world. No, every the four corners, if there are four corners of the world, the gospel must reach. Now, some places you will appreciate with me that it is difficult so, to get the gospel there. For example, in a predominantly Muslim country, it is predominantly difficult to get the gospel. Sometimes you have to have underground churches and all these things. They realize that you are Christian, then um, it's like you're committing suicide. But you don't know what happened. Do you know that I'm speaking to you right now? And after I finish this lesson, it can go to the end of the world? Yes, it can. So the gospel kingdom should be preached right. until the end of the world, until the end, until the end, and then the end will come, right? So the point is, the Lord said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Good? Yeah, read. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yes. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Right. And these signs shall follow them that believe. No, we come in to the my point name now. Shall be just, one minute, just, just, just one minute. We come now to the point now we, we talk about signs. Now, and these signs, not, not 
S I G D N, but S I G N S plural. These signs, and I when when we finish up this brethren, this particular scripture, I want to ask you a question. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Remember the Bible said, if you believe as the scripture had said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So he said, these signs now shall follow them that believe. Now, and then he said, it is going to happen in his name. So continue, Elder. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Mm -hmm. They shall take up serpents. And, it, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Thank you. Now, let us give ourselves a test now. The Bible says, these signs shall, it says shall, follow them that believe. Now, let us, let us, all of us tonight are going to give ourselves a mark. Don't tell me what you come up with. Great, let's grade ourselves now. In my name, they shall cast out devils. How much of us freed of Obia? How much of us freed of Dopey? How much of us freed of evil spirit? Bible said, we shall cast them out, you know. Shall. Now, they shall speak with new tongues. Of course, we see ourselves speaking with new tongues. That means everything else is possible. Now look, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink daily things, it shall not hurt them. When I say that you must presume, because I take a poison and drink it now. But people will say poison to hurt you, right? And you don't know. And that is why you should not just take up something and drink it down and eat it down. Pray over your food before. If you know it's in the Lord, come and hold up a thing to a man, bless it. We must bless our food before we eat. Don't just do it your own attacks. A lot of impurities are there. They shall lay under the sick and they shall recover. All right. When we come home and we see our loved ones sick, start the truth. The first thing wrong got that. Start the truth. <laughs> Don't answer me. Nobody answer me. But the first thing you hear that when somebody is sick, the next thing. No, not even that. You know, so we should also raise the dead. And when we have a relative when the person died, the first thing we undertake and so on, so on, plan funeral. That's how we stay. <laughs> they, shall, they, shall, um, they shall take up serpents. They shall not hurt. The power that lies in the person that is empowered by the Holy Ghost is astronomical. We can't, we don't realize what we have in us when God put into us the Holy Ghost. We are not just normal person. We are royal priesthood. We are holy nation. We are peculiar people. We are called out of darkness into this marvelous light. We have power. If we know the power, now they say the, 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 the elephant is stronger than the lion, but the elephant don't know its strength. So the lion beat the elephant. Good. I am saying, if we know the strength that we have, if we know the power that God put in us, when the Lord said, in my name, in my name, if we know the power of the name that we have, we wouldn't be so coward. One of the things with some, nobody is Christian, we are so coward. And every little thing we run and cry and... <laughs> And we having us, no, look at it this way. I want to show you something. Do you know that David did not have what we have today? When David went to fight Goliath, and Saul, who should be the man going out there, tremble. Huh? And David said, when he went to Goliath, he said to him, you come to me with your spear and all those things, eh? But I come to you in the name, brethren, what we have is the name, just like Peter and John would say, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. We, we must say it because we believe it. We must say it because we believe it, not because we learn it. 
That because we are describing what we hear somebody say, but we must say it because we believe it. Eh? And the big old giant tumbled down because he went in the name of the Lord. Because Bible says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. For they are brought down and are fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. When God gives us the Holy Ghost, it's not just to speak in tongues. We can, in the early days, they said the apostles turned the world upside down. And we end up as a set of cowards. Every little thing people say we're grown and bad. Eh? When, when this older man come to Peter, and after, after you know what our, our problem to the filthy Luca is crippling us. Filthy Luca is crippling the church. Money. People sell their soul for money. And Pete, the, 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 the older man come and say, um, he want to pinch Peter some money. And any amount Peter say he would give him. And Peter say, your money perish with you. And your heart is a God of bitterness. You need to go and repent. So maybe someone would have taken and put it in your pocket. <laughs> I am telling you, brethren, with our shame. What lack the power? Filthy lucre, corruption, all these things. Lack the power. No, we're, not, we're not getting to the power of God that's supposed to demonstrate what we are doing. Laying up treasures and we soon go and leave it, believe it or not. We need to invest in the word of God. We need to invest in the power of God. Otherwise, we become that the Lord is church. We just look on and going on. The world backs us from pillar to post. And we have the power of God in us. So, so, so we are saying then, people will do things. Another thing that the Holy Ghost teach you, the Holy Ghost teach you to have good behavior pattern. Yeah? Yeah. The Holy Ghost tell you to wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. The Holy Ghost is not the author of confusion and division and all the type of thing, discord and all that. So some people will be, will be, um, will be shocked on the day that the Lord said, I didn't know you. Look at the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, the Holy Ghost, if you plant a tree now, after a while, you expect the tree to bear. So the Holy Ghost is initial planting the tree in us, but we should see the fruit of the Spirit coming out. If you say you receive the Holy Ghost and you see out of you coming just wrath and strife and, uh, and pull down, and if you see that coming out of you, Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. It means that the fruit of the spirit is not coming out. So it's a possibility you never receive the Holy Ghost. Huh? It's a possibility you never receive the Holy Ghost. And somebody tell you something. All right. Um, now, look, for example, at St. Luke chapter 4. St. Luke chapter 4, verse 14 to 21. All right. And while persons are looking for that, there is one more question, a follow up question in the chat. Yeah. All right. So the person is asking um, with regard to the, um, the power that you just mentioned, the power to um, pick up serpent, to drink deadly thing, etc. So they're asking, do you believe that everyone who has the Holy Ghost is given? these powers or are there special gifts given okay. to special persons okay no there is the holy books and there is all right let me put it use another example there is a doctor general practitioner and there is specialists so you have some people who specialize in the high People who specialize in the feet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Well, but they are all general doctors, but you have to be a general doctor first and then you specialize. So every single person that received the Holy Ghost have the power. Hmm? Have the power. It is in you. But there are some people you know, who are going to give, give, give you special gifts. So for example, the gift of healing, right? There are somebody made us come and lay and on the sea. And they, so let me give you an example in the Bible. Philip went down to Samaria to preach. And when Philip preached and the people were converted and baptized, then they send Peter and John down there and they go and lay on the people and they receive the Holy Ghost. So we have different gifts, but from your have the Holy Ghost, you have the power. All right. Any more questions? I want them in on. <laughs> I love them. Right. There is one. The person started typing. Shamik, Peter King, if you can just finish up your question. Mm -hmm. She started typing, it seems, but the question um was okay. not finished. So once it's right. finished, then I'll relate. Let's go to St. Luke 4 then, 1421, and then we come back. And Jesus four. returned in the yeah. power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. No, I want to stop there a little. Um, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Now, when we move out in the Spirit, when we are empowered by the Spirit of God, let us say, all right, let us put it to us to the test. Let us say we were told, you, me, or any one of us, were told by the Lord to go up into the national stadium and he will send all the sick persons from, with, with all different types of sickness, whatever. And you'll walk around just like, oh, Peter would move around and you shadow, heal the sick. You know what will happen right away? Your fame is going to go throughout all the place. One of the things that affect a lot of us, when our fame starts to go out, we will lift up in pride. And we don't realize that it's not me who do it. It is God. And all praise must go to God. All right? So um, his fame went about. Right? But I'm going to show you something. Read it. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Yes. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Yes. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he had sent me to be the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are abused. Thank you. Now, I just knew this to show a little behavior pattern of the Lord. Now, remember we read earlier on that his fame went all around. And he went into the synagogue and they gave him the book, and he read from that. But after that, you know, he gave them back the book and he sat down and keep himself in subjection, right? We are not, when the Lord start to raise us up, brethren, when our fame start to go out, we must find fasting and prayer, and we must be humble, humble, humble ourselves, because if we exalt ourselves, we will be exalted. So if you're just showing the humility of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord was upon him, anointed him to do this, and but remember now, and on me you're doing it, is the spirit of the Lord. So we talk about glossolalia, and we're talking about Holy Ghost now, all right? And nothing is impossible when we are being anointed by the spirit of God. Nothing is impossible with us. Good. Now, if you look at Philippians 4, verse 10 to 13, 
All right, before you go to that, all right, so the person placed her question, Shanique Peter King, thank you for this question. Yes. And I believe it's born out of the scripture, Acts 2.38, which speaks to um, the process of repenting, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and then receiving the Holy Ghost, and then living a righteous, godly, and sober life. So the question that the person asked, that Shanique rather asked, is can you receive the Holy Ghost before getting baptized? And the mm -hmm. short answer is yes, but if you can expand on that. Okay. If you can, if you can receive the Holy Ghost before? Before being baptized. Yes, Acts chapter 10 will tell you that. You will find that in Acts chapter 10 that while Peter yet speak, the Holy Ghost fell, and then he said, can anyone forbid what that he should not be baptized? And they baptized him after that, all right? So the Holy Ghost, remember now, if you can believe it doesn't matter who you are, you could just be a murderer. I don't care who you are. But if at that moment, if you can believe as the scripture has said, out of your belly will flow the rivers of living water. One of the things that I sometimes struggle with is sometimes we've been church for many years and still some people come in who were unsaved a couple of days ago and come in as they come in and was spending on time and receive Holy Ghost, right? So you, you don't have to be baptized to receive the Holy Ghost. But when you're baptized, when you get the Holy Ghost before baptism, it shall lead you into all truth. And the Holy Ghost, when you are, if you are, if you didn't receive the Holy Ghost and you are baptized, it should be not many days hence. I spent three months to receive Holy Ghost after a long time. Three months now, 90 days, <laughs> too much days. Not many days ends. Once you come in and you give over your all to the Lord, right? Whether you were baptized or not baptized, right? God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. But when you fill you with the Holy Ghost and see a person, then the Holy Ghost now will lead you into all truth. All right? Any more questions? None? All no, right. that's the last one in the chat thus far. I'm not sure if anyone wants to vocalize your question. Okay. But that's the last one in the chat thus far. Okay. Good, good. Let's go now to um the Philippians. Four verse 10. Yes. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me had flourished again wherein he were also careful, but he lacked opportunity. Yeah. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Yes. I know both how to be a beast, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Thank you. Now, there is sometimes, brethren, we go through some little patches in life. Sometimes we go through um, a little unemployment. Sometimes we go through some little difficulties, which is to um, and I want, I want, if you are here, the next time we are on, we're going to look at the life of um, Joseph and Judah. And I want, you will be surprised. There are so many things you need to learn. So next Bible class, I would like you to come for that. All right? You're going to learn a lot. Uh, okay. And sometimes we go through a lot of things and it, dam it tends to dampen our approach to God. But even at the last moment, brethren, when they tie you up and about to throw you into the fire, you must believe your God. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens. Even at that last moment. And sometimes as people tell a little lie on us, and people treat us a little way, Lord, I'm going to drop our hands. That is the opposite. What we should be doing is when people tell lies on you and people do things against you, important thing you must ensure that they do it with falsely. Good? And if it is done falsely, then you must rejoice. 
and be exceeding that. Don't drop your wings. Glad that you are able to suffer persecution for the, the name of the Lord. For great will be your reward in heaven. This salvation is not something that we are just here and just carrying out a routine, go to church, come back home, go to church. No, 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 Brick. We are preparing ourselves for the trumpet of God. And any man that do have the spirit of God is none of us. Good? So if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead in you, then we shall be that spiritual also quicken our mortal body. We are coming down, but I wanted to read um, Matthew 6, verse 30 to 33. Matthew yeah. chapter 6, verse 30 to 33. And while persons, again, are looking for that, yes. um, there are two questions in the chat. All right. So one, um, you mentioned, I'll take the second one first. Yes. So you just yes. mentioned it um, briefly, but if you can expand on it for the purpose of um, Joshua's hearing and others who might also be interested. All right. So it says, what if the person dies with the Holy Ghost and not being baptized? So they receive the Holy Ghost before being baptized. But um, shortly after they passed away, um, oh, oh. what's the state of that person, do you think? Well, um, I tell you something. If God, this is now in God's prerogative. This is where the scripture is silent on it. Now, what we know, the Lord said, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom. Good. Now, in this case, God gave, we are, we, are, we are assuming now that God gave the person the Holy Ghost. Good. Now, if God gave the person the Holy Ghost, that now would be God's prerogative. Just like how oh, we would have um, the, the Lord would um, take up Enoch. The Bible said um, Enoch walked with God. And he was not. God, God took him. God, he was translated. God took him. Right? So in this case, the, the men on the cross, and one of them repented at that stage. And God said, today you shall be in paradise with me. I mean, it's God's prerogative. That one, no. I wouldn't go too far. <laughs> All right? That is God's prerogative. Good. All right. Thank you. I thank you, Bishop. It seems like you already have the answers put down to answer. Right? So the next question is, the final one in the chat thus far is, does the Holy Spirit have to manifest in you? And that's verbatim, does the Holy Spirit have to manifest in you for you to go to heaven? So okay. We, okay. Okay. God did not give us the Holy Ghost to go and sleep, you know. <laughs> you know, it goes to go to sleep. Uh, we read in St. Mark that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then now you shall be witnesses unto me. You should, you should do something. That's what the, that's why you know, get the Holy Ghost to sit down. And you know, let me just elaborate a little bit. You know, there are some people who get Holy Ghost and sit down in church and they testify, they don't testify. They don't do nothing at all. But they receive Holy Ghost. No, man, that's not what we have the Holy Ghost. We will get the Holy Ghost to work. The Holy Ghost is a tool. And that's why I said earlier on that the Holy Ghost is the most, is the most underutilized asset in the church. We are not using the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right? Because every little thing we run to the doctor, every we're not using up the feet. Yeah? If somebody come and say, we have power, everybody frighten and run up and down the place. When we should be laying on the sick and they shall recover. That's what we so we have to shake up. You know, Paul talking to Timothy and he tells Timothy that um, stir up the gift that is in you. Because some people have the gift and the gift are silly. Stir up the gift, all right? And let us not just, um, just dear so. No, no, no. We shall turn the world upside down, all right? <laughs> Any more questions? 
All right, so two more, um, okay. and then we'll let you continue and then come back to others if there are others. All yeah. right, so the first one, what if the person is baptized and not filled with the Holy Ghost? Should he or she be allowed to participate in church activities? And they were specific in the examples, the example prayer, um, praise and worship, etc. So All you right. can... The answer. person baptized and is not filled with the Holy Ghost should participate in service. The person should pray, the person should praise, the person should do everything. But the person should not, listen to me now, the person should not participate in sharing the word. Right? The Lord said, and the person should not be sent out on missions. The Lord said, tarry in the city of Jerusalem mm -hmm. until you will be endued with power from on high. So you can do, you can in a church and praise and worship. And of course, you must worship, but you can't come to church and come sit down. Praise God, man, and praise God. Hello. And everything that you do, you, but, but don't participate in other things. Another thing that also we should be careful and be careful about is when the person baptized in water, the person is not yet able to spiritually discern certain things. We should know that. Therefore, because certain things are spiritually discerned. So when you when you allow the person to participate in things like Lord Supper and so forth, you, you may run a risk. So what I tell people to be sure, make them receive Holy Ghost, right? And then you can move them to that because the Bible says a man must examine himself, a man examine himself. And it is spiritual examination and sometimes this physical man is not able to do that. All right. All right. The final so one for point now. Here. The final one for now. Coming to you, Brother Brown. The final one for now. There are some people, and this is verbatim again. There are some people not. There are some people not seeking God for the Holy Spirit, saying when God is ready, He will fill them. How mm -hmm. can you help that person, or should? Or should the church teach them more on receiving the Holy Ghost? For if persons have this belief, might end up being lost. Yes, yes, that is so true. You see, one of the things that we should understand, brethren, is there are three things, right? Seek, knock, and Somebody tell me another one. Ask. Right? A S K. Ask, seek, knock. Good. Now the Bible says we should seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto us. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You need to seek the Holy Ghost. No, but I sit down and talk to you when you sit down there and when God ready at your convenience. Because you get up and go to the supermarket. I have a say in the supermarket right now, we bring the thing You get up and go, you get up and go to the tax office, you get up and go to the bank, get, but get up and get Holy Ghost. You must, you must show God that your heart is right. God, he that knows, see the heart will give you the Holy Ghost. Get your heart right. Nobody will from pastor and nobody is your soul. All right? <laughs> so, uh, but it's true. <laughs> All right, the last one, just the last one for now. We'll get to we'll get to Audrey purchase after. All right, yeah. so T is um she or he um gave some further clarity. Now you mentioned it earlier, but just to expand for their edification because there seems to still be some um confusion. All right, so the person is saying that what I meant is to lead praise and worship, pray for offering, sing on the choir. So the person no, is not no. filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. No, 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 no. Don't let them do that. Don't let them do that. Don't let them do that. Because if you do that, then you are running yourself. You're running the poor people into trouble. Let me tell you why. In, when I went to Greenwich Road years ago, um, I, we, I noticed that we have believers, we call them, we're doing everything in the church. And I, Elder Reed was my pastor and my father. And I said to him, Elder, stop it. No matter we did, take them down. And we scrapped the choir, scrapped the choir. One person was there for 50 years and didn't receive Holy Ghost. 
but he was almost like acting faster. And we said to him, no, 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 take him down, take down everybody, take down everybody. And believe me, brethren, those brethren who are listening from Greenwich Road now, who were there at that time, will remember. When we say people who not see Holy Ghost, and after a while, when people come at the gate of the church, they feel, and the road coming to church, they feel, all right? Because you see, if you, if you make people feel too comfortable in church and can do everything, then after a while, they, they become chronic and you can't get them to go back to Tari again because they develop something in their mind that they, they are just like the spirit feel and it's a spiritual church. It's a spirit feel church. It's not a flesh church. It's not a nominal something. It's a spirit filled church. And any man without the spirit of God is none of it. So we are fooling people. We're fooling the people. And we must stop fooling people. Make them all get Holy Ghost. Paul went down to Ephesus and he's in Acts chapter 19. And he saw some disciples and they were worshiping you know, them. And he said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They say, We're not even here with that being words. He said, What are you baptized? They said to John baptism. And he said, Listen, me, John baptized unto repentance. Huh? But believe on Christ, and they, when they do that, huh? yeah. so, so let me read it. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, that they should believe on him which should come after him that was on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hand, he will come not to the hand laid, laying hand, hmm? they receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So when people come, ask them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Right? And the Bible said, receive the Holy Ghost, came up and they, and they speak with tongue and prophesy. So we need to tell the people the truth because let me tell you one of the problems, brethren. When people come in the church, they become newborn babe and they are desiring the sincere milk of the world the word to grow when you make them stay too long and give them responsibility in church especially if they're affluent people and they work in big offices and, and this is one of the problems let me just deal with this since i'm on the with this one of the things with some people when they come to church they may realize that even though i am ceo for the biggest conglomerate right when i come to the lord i'm a believer i leave that out of street but some of them come with a big title and a big this and come in church and we're afraid of them. No. When the, when the centurion came to the Lord, he said, Lord, I'm a man under authority. I have, when I tell soldier to go or come, they come. Huh? But when I come to you, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof. But speak the word only. The word is bigger than me and you. Speak the word only and my servant shall be Heal. And the Lord said, I've never seen such great faith. Huh? In verse 11 and 16, and Jesus heard it and marveled and said unto the, uh, them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. So when the people come, I don't care who they come, what kind of big car they drive, or what kind of captain they drive from the church, they are still sinners, need to be saved by grace. And we must come down and be humble before God. Doesn't matter who you are. All right? <laughs> so, Bishop Marshall, I think. All right. Marshall, <laughs> All right. Anyway. Thank you, Bishop. Just a quick question. And this is perfect timing. All yeah. right. So, Audrey Purchase was asking, um, and this, is, this has to do with the nuances between being baptized in the name of Jesus and being baptized in Father, Son, and Holy oh, Lord, we have right? So that. she's asked. So she's asking if a person is from another denomination slash religion. She put religion here, but denomination also would fit. And they were, uh, re they received the Holy Ghost in that as part of that religion or denomination. Um, however, as part of that denomination or religion, their method of baptism was in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, as opposed to the name of Jesus. How would you regard? Yeah, well, you, don't, you don't have to regard that. You don't have to trouble that. If the person, and remember, is not baptism in Father, Son, or Holy Ghost. There's only one baptism in Jesus' name. There's an immersion. 
immersion with ring to the third, right? Is a immersion, but only one, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Good. Now, if the person is in another denomination, as you know, Christianity is the overall religion, and under Christianity, you have a number of denominations. Now, if the person is baptized in another denomination, right, in whatever, once the person receives the Holy Ghost, one of the functions of the Holy Ghost is to lead the person into all truth. And truth is Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So just like all the people at Ephesus, we say in Acts chapter 19, were baptized unto John baptism, when the truth come, all of them baptized in the name of Jesus. You don't have to worry about them. Once it's the Holy Ghost them get, the Holy Ghost is going to lead them into all truth. Because God, church, you know, is his apparatus. You don't have to worry yourself about that. All right? All right. And lastly, Gail Thunder, no lightning, no. Uh, mentioned that that needs to be taught in apostolic churches that used to be how it was standardized but no it's not so much i guess that's what you meant to say no it's not so much need to be retaught and reminded and that is in relation to the question about practicing or rather persons being actively participating in aspects of worship but not having received the holy ghost um let me tell you the Bible said, you see, the time will come when men will not end your sound doctrine. But unto them said the, the uh, mm -hmm. teachers have been teaching years. And there will be a time, you see, a famine which is upon the land right now, that not for food, not for water, but for the word of God. Good? Famine is on the land right now. And that is why Paul talking to Timothy, he said to him, you should rightly study to show yourself approved unto God, right? You should rightly divide the word of truth. Now, I can tell you that two into four goes six times. I'm dividing, but I'm wrong, right? I'm still dividing, but I'm wrong, right? So what is happening today? People are dividing the word, but they are not dividing it the right way. And to find the true undiluted gospel and to find the truth without the compromise, it is difficult to find it when people tell you. Because in, in what is happening now, you know, everybody looking to further them own bed. And if a man can come to the church and he have money and he can be and you know, you know, subject to the same rigorous treatment. Like the man who's a guard now over there and can hardly do something, right? And we cannot do that. Bishop, I don't care who you're there, sister, or you want to call yourself. Every single person is subject to the word of God, bigger than every one of us, all right? That's why the Lord said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He built his church, not mine, all right? And, and some people have fight for all that fight. And I don't realize that I said, no. except God build the house. We labor in vain that we need. Except God keep the city, the watchman wait, wait but in vain. Right. I have more, but I'm going close up. But I want to do that exercise I told you about. Any more questions before I go to exercise? No, yes. not seeing any more. So okay. you can continue. Okay. Now, two scriptures that I want to read. And I want to use it as an exercise. I want to go to um, 2 Samuel 4, verse 4 and 5. 2 Samuel 4. And somebody else finds 2 Samuel 9, 1 to 13. This, we're going to use it, what we call typology. Good. And it has to do with a grandson of Saul, um, the son of Jonathan, um, that called it the Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Good. That's the grandson of Saul, son of Jonathan. All right. Second Samuel chapter 4, 4 and 5. Could somebody read? Somebody else will try to read those two verses. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet, 
He was five years old when the tidings came to Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel, and his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass as she made haste to flee that she fell and became lame, and his name was Mephibosheth. Good. And <laughs> yes, verse five. Verse five. And the mm -hmm. sons of Raymond, the Bermite, Jacob, and Benai, Nan, went and came about, about the heat of the day to the house of Isaac, who lay on a bed at noon. Thank you. No, I just want to say to you that Saul and hear some bad news, and the maid took up um, Mephibosheth, um, run with him. And he fell and was lame, crippled. Let's say he's crippled, right? That is Mephibosheth. Good. But remember now, he was the son of Jonathan. He had royalty in his blood. Now, um, 2 Samuel 9, 1 to 13. Could somebody read that now? And we're going to finish after this, ask, except we have some questions. And David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? No, just a minute. You remember now that David and Jonathan were very good friends, even though Saul wanted to kill David. All right. Now, but I want to send some warning here that sometimes when we kill one person, we don't know what we are doing. And especially when God anoints somebody, be careful how you deal with them. All right? You have to be very careful. If the anointing oil go up on a person, all right? That's why David would not hurt Saul, even when he had the chance to do it. Good? No. Saul tried to kill David all the time. Because the people say Saul has slain his thousand and David is ten thousand. I'm out in jealousy and all these things affect him. But let us say he had killed David. It would be David alone, you know. You know who would kill? He would kill Solomon, who should come and build the house of God. Right? He would kill Christ, who should come through the line of David. A lot of things he would be killing and don't realize. Be careful how we kill, you hear? Be careful. Anyway, that's not the lesson tonight. So go. Really? And the there was of the house of Saul, a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him into David, unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan's, Jonathan has a son which is laid on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Mike Mahar, the son of Amiel in Lodibar. Then the king said, Send, then the king David sent, and fetched him out of the house of Mahar, the son of Amiel from Lodibar. Just a minute. Now, remember now, David become king of Israel, because right through that's what it's supposed to be. Even if Saul didn't like that, that's what it's supposed to be. And I'm hearing telling the brethren tonight, if God had you to do something, let people fight it. The more they fight it, is the better. Next, next Bible lesson, you will see what I'm saying. The more they fight you, is the better it is. Did you know that the more that the Egyptian pressure the children of Israel, the more they multiply? Yes, yes. So the pressure is good. Now, but in this case, David could have said, Saul had did done me so much wrong let me go and take revenge on his grandson but david didn't say that david say uh because jonathan was so good to him he said he wanted to do some kindness let us try to do kindness eh? but i'm coming to my point really now when mephibosheth the son of jonathan the son of saul was come unto david he fell on his face and did reverence mm -hmm. and david said mephibosheth and he answered behold thy servant and David said unto him, Fear not, for I have will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan's sake, mm. and will restore thee of all the land of Saul thy father. 
and thou shalt eat bread at my table. Oh Lord, Lord, I'm going to restore to you all the land that Saul uh, left, your grandfather left, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. continually until you die. Good? You shall eat bread in the king, king in king's house, right? Even though you are lame and even though you can't move, what, what, what Jonathan had done for me, you are, you are going to sit at my table, eat bread, continue. Read. And he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant? That thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy son and thy servants shall till the land before him, and thou shalt bring him the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. Mm -hmm. Verse 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. And Mephibosheth at a young son, whose name was Micah, and all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in the king, in, sorry, in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was laid on both feet. Okay. Now, let us conclude tonight by saying we don't want the church to be spiritual Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth could sit at the table, he could eat, he could speak, but he could not walk. He was lame in both feet, he could not walk. Now, if the church treat the place to be spiritual Mephibosheth, we will be empowered by God. We are sitting at the table. We are royal priesthood. We can eat and we can talk, but we can't walk. The walk after we are empowered by the Holy Ghost is not just to sit and to eat and to talk at the king's table, but we must go into all the world. We must walk. But if we are lame on both feet, let me tell you, trouble. Because as no work will be done, we'll be sitting, we'll be stagnated because we are lame in both feet, spiritually and physically. If the church reach that place, we will just be blessed, blessed and holier and not speaking with God. God bless you tonight. God bless you. Are there any other questions? If not, we'll draw the curtain. No more questions in the chat, sir. Are there any comments? Anybody yes, like sir. To? Yes, sir. Brother Brown here. Just yes, want brother. to make a comment on what somebody had said about um, people who were not filled with the Holy Ghost partaking in activities in the church. Mm. And the reason for that, why they should not be partaking in activities in the church, like praise and worship and other things, is like those areas are spiritual areas. And praise and worship and the choirs are spiritual offices in the church for spiritual people because People without the Holy Ghost are not at the place spiritually to minister to the souls of men because people that lead praise and worship are not just people standing there just singing a song or people just on the choir singing. We are actually ministering to the souls of men. So you cannot use believers to do in those sort of offices 
those offices are reserved for spiritual people, sir. God okay. bless you. Okay. The church is the church is a spiritual church. The first thing you have to understand, the church is not a physical entity. Right? The church is a spiritual church. So the qualification for the church, remember now I told you in the previous lesson that you have to separate the church from the congregation. Now, the, <laughs> I grew up on a pastor and the pastor said, if his kerchief drop, I should take it up. Because if God cannot fill me with the Holy Ghost, then he's not going to trust me with his kerchief. And it was hard saying. And I said, no, no, I have to, this, this thing. no, 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 I have to get, I have to get Holy Ghost. Really? And that was three months to take me to get Holy Ghost. So I'm saying, we don't want to promote a system and a doctrine. We are the people coming to church and we have them for years ministering and we don't emphasize it because after a while, you know, we're able to manage them again. They become chronic and they come set in their ways. So from the come, the first thing to do, start to tell them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And to what then were you baptized? And start them off on that. Right? Don't let them continue to let them up all in the choir and then start preach and, and then you tell it what the tariff the Holy Ghost. It don't work that way. And I'm glad they didn't tell me that to start preach and teach and sing and do all these things without Holy Ghost. After a while, it's going to be difficult to go back to the Long Altar and see the Holy Ghost. All right? So start it the right way. Repent. Baptize, receive Holy Ghost, live in a righteous, godly, and sober life, then we move on from there. All right? I think that, that, that it's, just, it's just fear to the people. All right, before you close, um, thank you, Bishop. All right, so before you close, just some persons um, thanking you for the lesson. All right, so Chelsea Abroad is saying, wonderful teaching, God bless you all. Consella Gooden, powerful Bible class, Fabian Banton, blessings, Bishop Thorpe. The teaching was rich and edifying. God bless you, sir. Gail Thunder, thank you for the rich word. God bless you. Raymond Simmons, bless you, Bishop Thorpe. I am blessed with the teaching tonight. To God be the glory, sound the teaching. Uh, Sister Kerryon Banton, um, God bless you, Bishop, for a profound Bible study which challenges us to exercise the power of the Holy Ghost and be God's ambassadors on earth. Latoya Griffiths, thank you, Bishop. God bless you. Great Bible study. It was indeed rich in the word. We bless God for his word. Sister Diana, amen. Bishop Tanet, wonderful lesson. Sister Bernard, great teaching, sir. So you are well blessed. Sir, God with bless all you the all. God bless you all. I want you to come next. Next, I don't want you to miss the lesson that I'm going to teach. Um, next, the second Tuesday next month. I don't want you to read that because there is something in it I want you to see. And I bet you, when you come, you're going to say, "Wow, I didn't know that in the Bible." <laughs> so the second Tuesday next month, I want you to come. And if I don't invite you to the, any other one, I want to invite you to that one. All right. God bless you tonight. God bless everybody. Have a wonderful time and stay safe. Amen. And don't expose yourself, amen, to any danger around. Keep safe for the Lord has been keeping you. And remember, don't murmur too much about what is happening. Praise God for keeping you alive. Praise amen. God that no, no evil. Keep um, Psalm 91. Keep repeating it and believe it and move through the hurt with it. Because mm -hmm. no evil is going to come nigh. God bless mm -hmm. you tonight, everyone. Yes, God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Um, before yes, you pray, you. before you pray, there's a C. Hines. You have opened your microphone. Um, do you have a comment, sir or ma'am? God, 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 God bless you, Bishop. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Who is that? Oh. From Somerton? Is that some like a voice from Somerton? <laughs> exactly. Somerton. Sorry, exactly. I, I, God bless you. God bless you, sir. I <laughs> I am, am, and I please, am, please, please greet your, your suffragan bishop for me. <laughs> All right. God bless you. All right. So our bishop will close in prayer at this time. And then after that, you can go ahead and greet each other. Let's, let's bow our heads at this time. Eternal God and our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your ministering of your word. We thank you, Lord, for the hearers of your word. And Lord, we pray that your word will germinate into the heart of your people and bear fruit. 
Lord Jesus, for we need to experience, Lord, and to exercise the power that lies in your name. Lord Jesus, all power was given unto you in heaven and earth, and you give that power unto us. Lord, you say we shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon us. Bless us, we pray, Lord. Increase our faith in you, Lord, for we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you. Give you peace. Let all the people say, Amen. Amen.